Hey guys, what is up? Kevin Cage back with another cryptocurrency video. If it's your first time to the channel for daily news and info on the digital asset space, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get right into it. So to kick things off here, and I apologize if other YouTubers have gone over this graphic and some of the information today, I've been extremely busy and finally catching up, so hopefully we'll get some videos out this evening and set up for tomorrow. So first off, Matthew Linney, Ripple's business to business strategy is helping people build new business, says Ripple's audience marketing director. And as we can see, we're well aware of the connections of Ripple. Here's a relationship graphic. We know about, you know, Google Ventures. We know connections with Google Capital, Amazon, you know, PayPal, Apple Pay, Google Pay, JP Morgan, of course, various Fortune 500s, even, you know, Alibaba. So we're well aware of this, especially, you know, if you've looked at some of their beginning and, you know, first investors. So good to see that. And of course, a bunch of these people, Tencent, a lot of these, you know, investors as well have a vested interest to see Ripple as a private company thrive. Um, and along with that, the XRP ecosystem so it can build the necessary liquidity to succeed. All right. So, again, this is actually the article. Um, and again, this is written right by Matthew Chan. And there's just a few quotes I want to go over again. And I know many of you have already seen the videos and all the headlines recently, but still, it's good the reference for anybody that, you know, might be on YouTube just learning about Ripple and XRP. So Ripple is not just selling a technology project to financial institutions. We are working with regulators in every country around the world to educate, influence, and provide the needed direction. Again, this is how we actually make a revolution. They're not just some random ICO that's trying to get some money and talking in full of empty promises. This is the most legitimate di digital asset. I don't even like calling XRP a cryptocurrency. And eventually... Right now, I do title videos with like Ripple XRP because they're, you know, still a little bit hand in hand and interchangeable, unfortunately. But really, I only include Ripple because, you know, it's certain the search results help. In reality, in the future, when R3 starts using, SBI starts using and these other institutions, I'm probably just going to title the video XRP more so because, again, they're not connected. They were the digital asset was around before Ripple, the private company, and Ripple's using the native digital asset to the XRP ledger. So just so you guys know that. So again, it's opening new markets, building new products and services, attracting new customers and helping businesses to market to their end customer. And then right here, Ripple boasts over 200 banking partners across the globe that will eventually leverage RippleNet and digital assets, namely XRP for faster and cheaper cross-border payments. And of course, everybody on RippleNet, if they're using a, di a digital asset in some form or another, will be using XRP. It's already known. Ripple, the company, has explained this. And again, Ripple Note, Ripple Net is the basically suite of their software products. And there's really about three at this time, X Current, X Via, and X Rapid. And luckily, they're actually building an infrastructure to sync everything to actually use X Rapid, which will actually use XRP to source on-demand liquidity. So we are getting there. This is a marathon, not a sprint, but we're always seeing these developments. And this just came out today. Next up, I am Legion, just sharing this really quick. I don't need to go into this, but again, Amazon, one of the largest companies in the world, is in talks to acquire part of India's future retail market. So very, very exciting. We're, you know, It's just talking about the future of payments, talking about how all these industries every single day are releasing information. And again, right here, this is payments, P-Y-M-N-T-S. Always follow this. They always have different developments, of course. I know there is one about Venmo today as well with instant payments. It's simply a matter of time. This is a true pain point. We have to be able to send value as fast as we can send information today. So we're going to see a domino effect more and more. And again, XRP will solve this, at least as a cross-border bridge asset. Next, Cryptopolis. And I just like this a lot. So utility, utility, utility. XRP is differentiating itself from every other digital asset. It stands alone in the universe of alts for one reason. It's actually being used commercially on a global scale. Absolutely. And this is not financial advice. And then another thing I just see, Charles Hoskinson, Hoskinson um, one of the creators of the or leading, you know, the Cardano project at IOHK. Again, just is talking about a new Cardano up, update that's coming in the next few days, 1.6. So very excited to see that. It's been pretty quiet from IOHK and Emergo, you know, the two, some of the groups that are working on the Cardano project. And I know I did cover some information on Cardano and ADA with STOs in the future. So very excited to see, you know, these other altcoins as well. And again, that's not a competitor to XRP. I am rooting for the entire cryptocurrency space. So whether you like XRP or you're a fan of other digital assets, that's fine. Next, Guild One. And this is really 
pretty brief. Again, they're just talking about helping you know develop an efficient, modern, fast, scalable, flexible, innovative, and available 24-7 system for more so real-time payments. They're going to be leveraging blockchain and distributed ledger technology. This is further validation, again, right by Cointelegraph. The UK Pension and Welfare Agency examining blockchain and DLT should be no surprise, but I still felt like it was worth mentioning. So thank you, um, Otto Gunger or Gunger, for sharing this for me or to me. Next, this is just a good one. So soon this will be for XRP at Ross 2000 and I, whether it's Ross or Rose, I apologize, ROS. And right here, we already know about this. This is the famous tweet back in 2011. This, I feel so bad for this guy. It's not even funny. But he said, I wish I'd kept my 1700 Bitcoin at six cents instead of selling them at 30 cents. Now they're eight dollars Bitcoin. And again, it was a speculative market, so I don't blame him. It's not like you really had that viewpoint. The markets were all over the place. Um, I heard about Bitcoin when it was a few dollars and, you know, I just thought it was some scam. I thought it was fake Chinese money that was centralized when in reality it's, you know, still centralized. <laughs> but um not financial advice. But again, guys, it's it's hard for people to have a view. So I just, I appreciate all the content creators that are actually showing real news each and every day because this is motivation for us. Just like me, I'm motivated because I read the news, but I'll also listen to podcasts, seeing the technology, seeing the developments, and I will get motivated and it'll continue to help me through those tough days, through these long bear markets because it keeps that vision and I know where I want to go. People ask me my exit plan, it changes all the time, but there's nothing wrong with de-risking and taking some profit, you know, incrementally. But at the same time, the more I look into XRP, the more I want to hold it for life. And that's not financial advice, but compared to even the Argentine peso going down like 20%, if not even more, I have a lot of people that I know. I actually stayed in Argentina for a brief period in the past. And just knowing that, you know, their income is actually affected by this is very, very sad to me. So I do feel for them. I think there's going to be other countries that are impacted by their fiat and their current system with you know all this inflation. And again, this is just a great hedge, whether it's Bitcoin or XRP or any other digital asset. Granted, it is a risk and you could hypothetically lose everything, but I just see where the future is going and I'm very, very confident in XRP. All right. This, Michael IPinky7, again, this is uh, Michael Ziszczek on YouTube, so check him out. So from page 16, again, we have this document. Integrating the Ripple protocol in the Nordic region enables interoperability, that keyword again, interoperability, between Denmark, Finland, Norway, and Sweden, and simultaneously enables access to other global regions, currencies, and networks. And again, very, very cool. And we'll go to page 16, as he referenced. Just talking, you know, again, this is all Ripple XRP. Um, just, you know, talking about, let me go to the title again, but Ryan Zagone and these guys, Ryan Zagone and Patrick Griffin, Griffin assessing the Ripple protocol. This was back in 2015, just so you know. And again, it's a submission to the ECB, the European Central Bank. So let's just go to page 16 briefly, really quick. I just want to cover this. Enables interoperability without sacrificing autonomy. Many regions seek the efficiency and cost savings of seamless payment interoperability, yet few are willing or able to sacrifice their own autonomy and adopt a common settlement currency. This is particularly, particularly true for tightly linked economies, such as you know the economies I just named, and that may one day wish to connect their multiple payment systems, such as in Africa, while sharing a common settlement currency increases the likelihood of a successful regional payments integration. This is not feasible in all circumstances. Pretty interesting. I you know, highly recommend you, you know, follow Michael here on Twitter as well. He has some great documents that he shares. He's a stickler for facts and true sources. So I highly recommend you check him out. Next, XRP Crypto Wolf. This is a funny lawsuit. We're going to see more and more of these for all projects. I know we've seen some with XRP in the past. Big deal. This is peanuts. I, I would like to publicly say that I don't see anything truly detrimental coming out of this for the XRP ecosystem or Ripple. And this is basically XRP investors file a new complaint against Ripple for issuing an unregistered security. So a group of XRP investors filed an amended complaint against Ripple. They're arguing that XRP is this unregistered security under the current SEC's guidance or guidelines. And again, Ripple has until September 19th to respond to this new file. And even XRP Crypto Wolf, this lawsuit is BS, so don't worry. And again, not financial advice, but let's see what happens in September 19th. I'm not worried one bit. I've seen this again. Again, Marshall Moe sharing some information. 
And again, you cannot tie XRP if you actually go through the whole framework and even you know the Howey test for securities. It's laughable. So we will see what happens. I could be wrong, but again, you might think I'm arrogant, but I've seen this all before a lot, and I'm going to say I doubt it. Not worried. Right here, Yoshitaka Katao, and this gentleman is very, very reputable for the XRP ecosystem. I know a lot of you know him, so I guess he doesn't really need an introduction, but he is a chairman for Ripple. He is highly connected with R3. He is CEO of SBI Group in Asia, or at least SBI of Japan, huge consortium of well over 60% of the banks, if not 80%. And again, just digital currency regulation around the world. Sharing this article, I know we've all seen this. And again, this is Monica Long, SVP of Marketing of Ripple, along with Michelle Bond, head of government's re government relations. And they released this video a few days ago, or last week, actually. Time's flying, I can't believe it. And just talking about, you know, everything that they're working with. Um, and again, you know, Brad Garlinghouse even believes that the impact um, of, you know, Ripple and MoneyGram's partnership, so to speak, will have a bigger impact long term on the cryptocurrency market than even, you know, the Libra white paper. So I'm very, very confident in this. Again, people aren't seeing instant results. People aren't seeing the price fluctuation. If the price just skyrocketed right away, it would almost look like Ripple and XRP are, you know, in cahoots. So honestly, with the price differentiation and a lot of speculation in the market at this time without regulatory clarity, it's almost benefiting this ecosystem more. I'm here for the long term. I mean, I honestly, nobody knows what's going to happen with price per se. I, when it's with utility, of course, demand in any market, it will go up dramatically. And just so you guys know, yes, you can call me an idiot, but yes, I do see a three to four figure XRP at some point someday. Is that two years from now? Is that 10 years from now? Anybody's guess. I just want you to know that's my thought. So if you think that's too bullish, you know, go check out another video. Go check out some scam coin because there's 2,000 other projects and I'm putting my money, my hard earned money, where I think I'm going to get a return. But all right, guys, I will finish up with that for today. I have so many tabs open. If you haven't noticed, I'll try to get through these and I have a lot of work to do later. So just trying to keep up the daily content for you all. I appreciate it. Much love to the XRP community and I'll see you in the next video.